Hey, how's it going, Champagne Sharks? Hope everyone's doing well. Just wanted to uh, do some quick house cleaning and let people know. Go to ChampagneSharks.com and you get access to all the links related to Champagne Sharks. You can go there and find it all. And you can find where we are on social media, our products, all that stuff. Also, Patreon benefits, which includes Discord server, book club night, movie night discussions, show notes, newsletter, and most importantly, bonus episodes. So definitely become a patron for $5 a month at patreon.com forward slash champagne sharks. And without further ado, here is the episode. Take care. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome back to the Champagne Sharks. This is Kenny. I'm here with Vita. What up? First of all, uh, a little bit of house cleaning. Um, you can find us on ChampagneSharks.com. You can find us on Patreon, Champagne Sharks slash Patreon. YouTube, you can find us on YouTube at Champagne Sharks. Um, let me close this window. You can also find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple Podcasts. Just Google Champagne Sharks and you'll find us anywhere. If you want to donate to the program, you can donate to us through Cash App, uh, PayPal, uh, Patreon, anywhere where there's money. Venmo, you can you can donate to the show <laughs> anywhere there's <laughs> money, <laughs> wherever they send money to these days. Uh, we got it. <laughs> yeah, and, and it ain't hard to find because there's only one champagne shark. So we are here, me and Vita. Uh, Mario will be joining us a little bit later, I believe. We're having a conversation about religion, religion, and religious religious people, and in, in particular in the black community. And Religi- this is a topic they call it religiosity. Yeah, religiosity. And if you see the when well, you'll see the name of the this episode is called Sharkianity. You know what I mean? And we're we're coming from so many different points of views when it comes to religion. I myself personally has never um been um, involved in any religion as far as like practicing religion. You know, I have a whole lot of literature on religion. I have religious family members from all different sides from from rel- from people practicing Christianity and all those denominations, uh Islam and Santeria. Okay, so I understand understand all those religions i've just never practiced them but the conversation that we were having was uh well vita uh kind of jogged my memory on how this conversation even came about because i can't remember man because <laughs> we were looking at uh the first remember we did the live stream and we were talking about um Derek jackson's wife so Derek yeah. jackson the relationship guru guy who got busted cheating um he did a video apologizing with his wife in hand uh just talking about you know how he was a nasty ass man but you know he's gonna get it together well, he got exposed. He was still cheating. Wife, either way, came out with the video talking about, you know. She's oh, like, yeah. No weapons formed yeah, against me shall prosper talk, and all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Saying that she wears the helmet of salvation and she wears her army fatigue shirts because it's the breastplate of righteousness. And basically trying to say that she's a strong warrior for God and the devil's just trying to break up her marriage. Um, Devil lives in her house. (laughs) Sleeps right next to her. Well, sleep right next to her. Sleep with other women in their bed. But um, yeah, but she just, but it was the the stuff she was saying was so bizarre because it wasn't just something that was clear cut. Like, you know, God is going to, you know, help our family and all this stuff. It was really like, you know, really weird, cultish sounding stuff. Yeah. And I remember I said on the stream, I said, I'd be curious to know what church she attends because it sounds like the kind of shit I was raised in. Mm. And lo and behold, <laughs> come to find out there was a video exposing what type of church they went to. And I forgot the pastor's name. And I really don't want to give that pastor any promo anyway. But um, he's one of those faith healers. Put his no, put hands on people, and there's a video of him trying to cast out a dick sucking demon. Um, oh, that's the same church they go to. <laughs> yes, that's okay. Derek so wait, Jackson hold on, hold on, hold on, video. hold on, hold on. So in the video so, that I sent you guys, that's yeah. Derek Jackson in the video holding okay, one of the so look, That video. Now, everybody that used to follow me on Twitter, uh, I'm not on Twitter anymore. Lazarus got life. Everybody that follows me on Twitter and on Instagram, no, I've posted that video. I don't know how many times because it's so funny. And the woman, I don't know if the woman is like Dominican or Puerto Rican and she's a black woman, but she's like, she speaks in an accent. I don't know if she's Brazilian or something like that. And she went to that church and she's talking about how, she, but she went to that church and she's talking about how she went to bed and a ghost put his penis in her mouth. <laughs> right. And she went to church to get that demon out. And the, and the pastor is one of those dudes that does the, uh. You know, he's all yelling on the microphone. Get, get out of that demon, demon, get out, demon, out. get out. Or yeah, some people and, might call them like an exorcism, but it's like a non-Catholic exorcism. Yeah, and he like 
it's a whole act that goes along with it. And he like hit her in the head with the microphone and she like acted like she was being knocked out and all that kind of stuff. And then at the end, she was talking normal and she talked about how she had these issues. I don't know what the lady's problem was. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the clip and I'm going to play it because that shit is hilarious. Yeah, we uh, we can put, we can definitely insert that clip because yes. that's just wild. But in that video, Derek Jackson's in it. He's in that video. <laughs> so in the video I sent you with um, remember I told you to watch till the very end. Oh yeah, yeah, Kirk yeah. Kirk Franklin. Yeah, yeah. So right before that, Kirk Franklin e- exit. Derek, they, he calls out. He's like, wait a minute, Derek Jackson's right there, and he highlights Derek Jackson in that video. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it all makes sense because you know what um. When we was when I first started seeing, I didn't know who this dude was. I never heard of Derek Jackson, never heard of his wife. I don't know none of that stuff. You know what I mean? But when I saw it, I was like, something's not right. So then I started doing a little bit of research, like, okay, well, who is this dude? And I started seeing his videos. And I'm like, oh, this this bullshit. You know, basic bo- bottom line corny stuff that men will do online to pull on the heartstrings and on women who are having issues with men or having issues in their relationship, specifically black women, you know, um, and they're using a religious tone with certain types of things. And I, when I found out he was a part of that church, it all made sense. And I say that to say this, there's so many people that get involved in these kinds of churches. And um, all I'll say is this is you, you got a wife, you better not take her to that church or she's going to be getting fucked by everybody. OK, or even if she doesn't, your wife is be nuts. Like, yeah. <laughs> like that's the thing. Like, cause I can't even say that everybody's going to fuck because in the space that I was in, that might not have happened. But the people were still so lunatic. Like the way that woman sounded, it doesn't surprise me if, the, if Derek Jackson never wanted to actually be married to her. You know, or, or he doesn't anymore because she sounded like she was fully indoctrinated. Yeah, but he is, too. He was at the church. Yeah, but I don't think he's actually indoctrinated. I think he's just there. Like some people, I believe, go to, not people go to church just to be in church, but they don't actually practice any of the shit. The man's well, cheating yeah. on his wife blatantly. So clearly well, no, what I'm saying, what I'm it. saying is what I'm saying is as far as him uh, still being involved in being in that church, you know, a lot of those churches are all based around narcissism. They want to control people. And, Absolutely. you know, in those type of spaces, no, those men want to be there. There. Because the reason why they want to be that, there, I didn't say that they didn't. He didn't want to be there. I said he's not. I don't think he's fully indoctrinated. Meaning, I don't think he actually believes everything that 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 pastor says. I think no, of course not. No, 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 no. I think and, his wife actually believes that shit. That's well, yeah, she mean. does believe it. She. That's does. what that's, I mean when I say not fully indoctrinated. And that's what I'm. And that's what I'm saying. I don't think he wants to get rid of his wife or anything because he's in total control. Why would someone want to get rid of that situation? A person like that. A person like that that comes from those spaces, why would you want to get rid of a person that you can control? But I'm not like, saying he doesn't want to... I definitely don't think he wants to get rid of her. I say he, I don't think he really wants to be married to her. That's not what I'm saying. So what I mean by not doesn't actually want to be married to her, I think that's just the life he has. He's like, well, she's, she does the duties she's supposed to. Yeah. And that's enough as far as him not wanting to mess that up. But yeah. in reality, he's if you, if you have to do that in a relationship, you're not really happy in the relationship. He's talking about the guy? Him. Yeah, there's no way Derek Jackson's happy in that relationship. Why wouldn't he be? He's in total control. Because it's not a real relationship. No, you're speaking logic. Yeah, We're talking about my, crazy no, people. No, <laughs> I know that. I'm speaking logic. I'm speaking from a logical perspective. Yeah, we're talking about Clearly crazy from the lunatic perspective. Uh, yeah, he benefits from it because he's a fucking lunatic narcissist. But yeah. what I mean is, if, if from a healthy perspective, if, if a person's healthy, they would not be in that situation. That's oh yeah, but saying. yeah, but yeah, that's but that's another TV show. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not talking. About, <laughs> that's a different TV show. We're not talking about healthy people. We're talking about lunatics. Right. Like if you, in my opinion, and I don't want anybody to get offended. And if you do, you know where to find me to voice your opinions. Well, no, actually, no, you don't, because I'm not on social media. But I believe that in order for you to be involved in religion, you have to be kind of crazy. And and specifically, I'm going to keep it with black people, specifically for African-Americans. And I say that to say this. And jo- Dr. John Henry Clark said this. Black people don't know. They don't really understand religion anyway. You know That's what I'm saying? True. So in order for you to be a part of these things, there has to be something going on. Now, I'll say this, because I know people that get involved in church and it, it benefits them. And I'm talking about people that like I knew I knew these two twins. They're my parents age. Um, when I was a teenager, they were strung out bad. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> real bad. And I saw one of them like 15 years ago and he's not on drugs no more. You go to church. OK, for him. That's different. But you have people that are that grew up in this environment. This is a cultural. This is a cultural thing. This is what they do. You know what I'm saying? Like going to right. church. If you grew up in the South, going to church is normal. Like the same way I get up and watch football on Sundays. That's what they do. 
and all the things that come along with that, you know? So that means the the singing, the dancing, the giving up the money, the the somebody, all the drama that goes on in churches, the 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 um the pastor is sleeping with this person and that person, the this person is stealing money, and that's all normal. You know what I'm saying? For people that grew up in that environment. Yeah. Like that show Greenleaf. True. You know what I'm saying? I've never that show, seen it. I've yeah, never there's a show that. called Greenleaf and it's based around the black church. And I, I've only seen a few episodes, but for what I did see, I was like, oh yeah, I definitely see the, how that is. Like, you know, when they have those, you know, people have those stereotypes about church kids. Oh, PKs. Yep. Yeah, that's a real kids. stereotype. I mean, that's a yeah, real, a real I see this I know, shit for yeah, real. I know a dude that's in prison for murder right now. He's a preacher kid. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. wanted to be a gang member once he turned 21. You know what I'm saying? Now all of a sudden he's in prison facing a murder charge. He's been in there for like three years. Don't know if he's going to get out, if he's going to take a plea, what? You know, so that stuff, that type of stuff is true. But from when you're talking about uh, this guy, Derek Jackson and his relationship, no, no, no. I, and, and this is just my opinion. I believe he's good with this. He doesn't. And I don't want to put the quote unquote healthy relationship on people like them because this is healthy to him. You know what I'm saying? This is the way it should be. You know, it's like uh, you remember. Um, <laughs> you remember Jungle Fever? I've never seen that movie. Oh, damn. It just oh. never seemed like my cup of tea. So I never. Oh, no, 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 no. It. You got to see Jungle Fever. I gotta watch that one. Yeah, you gotta see Jungle Fever. It ain't even it, the, the interracial dating part is just part of the movie. You know, the, no, it the, wasn't. That, that wasn't even it. I just never got around to watching. Oh Still yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch. You got you got to check that. I was one of Spike Lee's best movies, and I say that to say this: in the movie, there's the character Flipper, which is Wesley Snipes. His brother is Gator, who is Samuel L. Jackson. He's a stone crackhead. His dad is a pastor, Reverend Good Doctor. His dad is extra religious. I'm talking about everything is about God, 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 devil, you going to hell, religion. His mom it was Ozzy Davis and Ruby, Ruby, Ruby D. That's that's their parents. You know what I'm saying? And Samuel Jackson's a stone crackhead. You know what I'm saying? He goes back to his parents' house to steal money, borrow, can I have, you know, and Flipper, which is Wesley Snipes, is an architect. And uh, he ends up getting into a scandal because he cheats on his wife with this Italian chick. And that's a whole nother side of it. But that environment that it, that consists in his family with the extra, extra religious dad, the mom who, well, I mean, she's a preacher's wife. So, I mean, she's religious, but she's going to bounce to the beat of the drum of whatever he's doing. The dad, right, right. you know what I'm saying? And the kids are all fucked up. Wesley Snipes is an architect, but he's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Not just because he cheated on his wife, but he's just fucked up in the movie. And then you got because, Samuel Jackson, who's a stone crackhead. He plays a crackhead almost too well. See, I've never seen it, but I can almost picture the ways in which the religiosity of the family affected the kids and how and the absolutely, outcomes. absolutely. Because, I, because that's that's something that I definitely um I, I can definitely see in a lot of situations growing up. So, like you said, you you weren't really religious uh, growing up. I was literally raised in the type of church. That Derek Jackson and his wife were in, right? Very, very, very. And, very and let me similar. ask you this, Vita: for that type of church, you don't just end up in that church. No, the the way you get into churches like that is they get you at your most vulnerable time in your life. So you're already fucked up when you get there. Is ninety right. percent of the chance, so like my ninety percent of the time. So my father um, ended up in the church that we were in because that's where he got sober. So for some, in, in, a, in a normal type of church or a place. You know, uh, getting sober in a church can be very helpful for you. You get a lot of spiritual enrichment. Um, it keeps you on the straight and narrow. Um, you become, you know, better to your family and friends if you're in a healthy type of religious space, right? When you're in a cult, which is what that kind of church is, they take advantage of your vulnerable state. So you, instead of you thinking, okay, I was strong enough, this, this space helped me become strong enough to kick my addiction, it becomes I'm only healed of my addiction because of this man of God. This must truly be the man of God. That's how they indoctrinate you. So you basically get better. You get healed. Your life does get better. And that's how most cults are, or most cultures spaces are like that. You actually go and your life does get better until you start to think that it was because of that space and you become so dependent upon them that you do whatever they say. And it's a slow indoctrination. It's not like it happens overnight. It's not one of those things where you're like, they don't, they don't come out, they don't come out the gate just being weird. They usually do, right. you know, cool things first. Like, hey, right. we're going to, we're going to, like, I remember um, somebody was telling me, uh, I hope he doesn't get mad because I know he listens to our show. <laughs> I won't say who it is, though. But he talked about a ski trip he went on with his friends, come to find out it was like his friend's church ski trip. <laughs> and they were, they had like a whole, like, he thought they were just going to go skiing. They had like a whole religious service before they went skiing. It was only supposed to be like a short time. It ended up being like seven hours of them trying to like, 
indoctrinate him and <laughs> all this stuff. So he's thinking it's a ski trip, you know? My dad got sober there, you know, because they would come to the uh, this place called the House of Uhuru, which is like a rehabilitation place. And they would go there and have services. And so that's how they recruited my dad. So they purposely would go into places where people were at their lowest state or their most vulnerable state. And that's how they get you. So who knows? Um, you know, I don't know how Derek Jackson and his wife ended up there, but who knows what state of mind they were in when they got there? Especially the, I would say, especially the wife, because she, she really seemed way into it. Oh, I yeah. wonder if she's like also mentally unstable. She Not probably comes with, from an abusive family, abusive background. I wouldn't even and, and, be and people. When I say abusive, I'm not might not be talking about physical, you know. But it could sometimes be emotionally and mental. Yeah, because when sometimes when you grow up in these spaces, I only know this from the outside looking in because I knew kids that grew up like this. So when you grow up in these spaces of religion, a lot of it is abusive. I used to date this girl, and she was a part of a church, and they would they would have certain things going on. But then the grown ups in the church, because you know they always have these teen whatever the fuck, you know, teen group, you yeah, know, and then they'll have and- yeah, teen night. There'll be some elder, or uh, at least they're older than you. They'll be twenty five, twenty six. They there with the teenagers. They're doing whatever it is that they do. But those uh, those older people, those elders, are abusive. So what they would do is the girl, this girl, she would tell me about how, and I knew these people because I went to high school with them or I went to like middle school, high school with them, but I didn't fuck with them. I thought they were a bunch of lames. But what I, what we found out was is that they would go to these teen groups and bully people. They bully them. You know what I'm saying? They go to these teen groups and anytime you're doing something that is, could be deemed against the church, then they'll, they'll label you like basically a hood rat because you was listening yep. to this song or because yep. you was... Uh, on on you missed a day and went to the basketball game. Oh, you you was out here doing living in the world. That's what they do, and that shit. Oh plays on yes, minds. I you went through all of that. I, that's yeah. literally what I went through. They guilt you. You weren't. Oh, you have time for this, but you got time to play basketball, but you ain't got time for the Lord. Right, you know, stuff right, like that. Right. Or the man, or you have the man of God said we weren't supposed to do that. You know, right. it would be. And you're right. It's very bullying. It's intimidating. And if it's all you know, like that was all I knew. So I was raised in it. I left when I was about 18, 19. And um, it was all I knew because I was raised in it. Right. And when I was, it, it, when it became so normalized to me, um, I didn't realize how insane it was until I left. I went to college and I just didn't have time to go to the services like I used. Because the thing about cults is you don't just go to a service on Sunday. It's not a right. thing. It's not even just, oh, I, 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 I joined the choir. It's more than that. You are there seven days a week almost, six right. to seven days a week. Right. And it could be for hours. You get off work or you get off, get out of school. But for me, get out of school, go straight there. Or if I had another program after school, go, go to my program, then go straight to church. Because um, Mondays we had uh, Daughters of Zion meeting. Tuesday we had Tuesday night service. Wednesday we had youth choir meeting. Thursday we had senior choir meeting or mass choir meeting. Then we had uh, Friday, we had uh, Friday night service. Saturday was a rehearsal for some other program or something we were going to probably do on Sunday. And then Sunday was service. But Sunday service was early morning service, Sunday afternoon service. That's the regular Sunday uh, church uh, church service. So there's, there's early morning service, regular Sunday afternoon service. Then you get like a mini break. And then you have mm-hmm. night service. And that mini break is just enough time for you to get something to eat. Maybe you have a rehearsal for something else you have to do with the church. Or you have to go, go visit another church and sing or perform or something before the, our night service would start. And guess what? The prophet could end that service whenever the fuck he felt like. Yep. So you could have spent there 7 a.m. for early morning service. If that prophet, if the pastor, we called him a prophet. If he didn't end the service at midnight, you stayed if he didn't, if he stayed, if he said you stay till stay till three in the morning, you stayed there. Yeah. Otherwise, he'd shame you in front of everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, so it's more, it's more, it's, it's it's a big psychological indoctrination. Anybody who's ever read about cults, you'll see these practices. It's a very specific mental practice that they do because they totally fuck with your head. So you don't even realize you're in this space because it happened. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not something you even notice. So it's it's. It's a really fucked up state of mind because you don't realize it's fucked up till you leave it. Yeah, I found I found that um, the reason why uh, I never fucked around with religion was um, one I didn't I didn't grow up in a religious household. I grew up in a um, I grew up in a Bible household. My my dad would read the Bible all the time. That nigga never went to church. Um, as far as like my family members, my grandmother was Christian, of course. She's from the South, you know. Um, my grandfather Christian. He's from the South. But then I had cousins that was in the nation. Uh, in the nation of Islam is its own cult. You know, that's a whole nother TV show. Um, and then I had Orthodox Muslim cousins. You know what I'm saying? 
And what I know, well, the reason why, if I was if I was going to get closer to any religion, it was Islam until one day I had a cousin, my cousin Saladin, he took me to the masjid out here in, or in Portland, really, really big masjid out in Beaverton, Oregon, which is real close to the Nike campus. And when I got out there, I wanted to get like literature and stuff and they wouldn't give it to me. I was like, what's that all about? You know what I'm saying? And what I noticed was racism. So all these Middle Eastern people, people from the Middle East that live out there and supposed to be Muslim and so loving and so giving and tell about how Islam is so loving and so giving and how Allah is so loving and so giving wouldn't give me any literature because I was black. Mm -hmm. Now, my cousin is black, but he's already been indoctrinated with the religion. You know what I'm saying? They looked at me as being different. You know what I'm saying? So after that, I was like, I don't want anything to do with that religion. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not saying it because one person messed up my experience. Nah, what I found is that. You know, it ain't just them that do that. I see that in a lot of different places when people yeah. people will never, never put religion above their race or hatred for another race. For whatever reason, Jews, uh, Muslims, it don't make a difference. At the end of the day, they find a way to hate black people. Yep. OK, so that and which proves that their religion is white supremacy. That's what the religion is. Mm-hmm. They code it. They code it and cover it up with all this other bullshit. But. After seeing Derek Jackson and seeing that situation, it started, I started thinking about all these different cults. I remember through the years where there was the, the people that um, wore all the, they all put on Nikes and they, they all killed themselves or Jim, J- Jim Jones, um, David Koresh, uh, Sung Young Moon, all these different people that have been a part of cults. And they always find a way to get not just a few people, a lot of people to follow them. Yep. And even from the beginning, uh, the logical mind looks at stuff from the outside looking in. I'm like, that don't look right. You know what I'm saying? That just don't look right. But for some reason, people follow along with it. They just go along with it. And I don't know what the psychology behind it is. That's not what my degree is in. So I'm not go- I'm not here to to be able to explain it. That's somebody else's job, I think. But if I had to take a, uh, a shot in the dark, I would say that a lot of people are looking for something to believe in. That's why niggas get out of prison and all they talk about is God, 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 God. You know yep. what I'm saying? You go to prison, do 10 years, God, 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 God. You know what I'm saying? Everybody come out Muslim wearing a kufi, even Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you're trying to figure out you're trying to figure out what's important to you. You're trying to figure out what's going to save you. Also, I think a lot of people, they start getting older and they're afraid to die. You know what I'm saying? So they yeah. start trying to find a religion, you know? I- I think the thing about cults, though, is and also to clarify, a cult doesn't have to just be religious. So there's all no, types of cults. No, there's all kind of different cults. There's yeah, sex cults. <laughs> there's all, yeah, literally yeah. sex cults. Sex all cult, kinds yeah. of cults. Drug you have cults, cults around, it, it, literally drug cults. Yeah. Um, so there are some cults that aren't necessarily religious based. So just to be clear on that. But for the cultish, religious uh, sex and things like that, if you talk to literally any, anybody who joins pretty much any religious organization that they weren't raised in, there's always a story of how of what state of mind they were in when they did it they were already looking for something they already had a fucked up life yep. um they, they were trying they they were addicted to something they were trying to change their lives um they were running from something um there's multiple reasons why people join end up in these spaces what happens though is we is that no cult starts off as a cult or looks like a cult. So when people join it, it doesn't look like a cult to them. Cause when people are first introducing it to them, they don't, they look like normal people. You just like, it's like if you and I just started talking one day, we become really good friends. Then you say, yo, how did you get to be so good at this? Or how did you, how were you able to get to this point in your life where you could be, you could overcome this? And I go, well, to be honest with you, I've been going to this group every week and I've been able to open, share my thoughts right. and it really I opened up and you know, this kind of thing. And then you, then people would go and, they would feel better like oh wow that did change my life because the thing about cults too is that they usually use things that do work they mix the truth with bullshit right so they'll do something that does make you feel good and it does work it's really maybe a breathing technique but it's not really theirs it's just a breathing technique right right right. but well whatever it is that they do maybe they'll say a prayer for you or sing you a song or they're right and they and they read those books too when it comes to like uh physical Physical uh, wellness, uh, mental wellness. Oh, they read they, those books too. They read them. The leaders of these things usually read them, and then they also read. They also learn a lot of psychology. And remember, a lot of these, um, a lot of cults. There's the top person, there's the head leader, and the people under them who also push the same doctrine. Right? right. They basically repeat whatever the leader has taught them about whatever the doctrine is. So what's happening is people become really connected to that. Oh, and let's not forget. Let's say you're also really hungry, and you 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 have uh, a place. You have no place. 
to stay. The people of that space are going to say, oh, you know what? Come over here, hang out with me or stay here. We'll take care of you. We'll take care of you. And they literally help you take care of your needs. Now you're around all these cool people. You're getting to know them. They're looking out for you. And you, and at some point, what happens with a lot of people, a lot of us don't like to say no, even if things have to feel a little off, what happens is our brain and the most and pretty much all of us do this, whether we believe it or not, most of us do this. We create a bias. So if somebody we like or somebody we admire does something, it, it might seem a little questionable at first. But what happens to most of us, we tend to rationalize it. Well, they do do these other things that are 100 percent legit and great. So you let the little things pass by um, or let those little red flags pass. And it's not usually until it's too late or something insane and, happens. And they, and they also do like how when you had a shitty family member and another person's like, man, your cousin's a piece of shit. Man, don't be talking about my cousin. It was exactly. like, you can say what they can say. You can say whatever you want about your group. Nobody else better not say nothing. Exactly. So it's, and, and you're already, you know, defensive of it because the other thing is once you've been involved in something, you don't want to feel like you were wrong. Or yeah, you, you don't want to look like a clown. You don't want to. So you, so you, so you, so you go harder, you go harder for it, right? So it's like, if you ever try, this is why they tell you, if you try to get somebody out of a cult, what you don't want to do is demonize the group. If right, you start right, right, telling right. them, oh, look at all this crazy shit that they're doing. All you're going to do is make that person fall deeper into the cult. Um, oh, was that Mario? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's me. What's going on? Come- <laughs> Did you just come in with a, mm. uh, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just listening to you preaching, man. You just, <laughs> hey, hey. Well, I just, this is the shit I know. Like, I'm telling right. you, this is like, I've, because having been raised in it, having watched it, and a lot of having studied it, because coming out of it also, by the way, is one of the most horrific, difficult things you could ever go through. Because the other part that the reason why it's difficult to even leave these spaces is because these are all the people that you've known, people mm. who've, who've supported you, the people that you've loved, the people that love you. Okay. You know, in a lot of these spaces, remember I was telling you they keep you there like seven days a week, so yeah. you don't really yeah. have much of a life outside of that. These are so all your life your becomes that. That becomes your family. That becomes, exactly. becomes your friends. That becomes the people you cry to about the boyfriend that you date and that's in the church with you. Right, exactly. Yeah. Or your job or what or the, maybe they're the people that helped you get your job. You know, there's all kinds of um intricate ways that they're in your life. So you can't just walk away because you feel like you're losing everything. So when I left, I lost I sometimes even thinking about it, I I, I try not to cry about it because I literally lost people I've known my entire life that helped me through some of the toughest things in my life. You know what I mean? When I got sexually assaulted, there was somebody at the church that helped me through that situation and I had to let them go, right? So a ma- or, or not, not just I had to let them go, I was excommunicated essentially. So people weren't even allowed to talk to me. So imagine, and I was like 19. So I'm like going through this whole So suffering. wait, 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 wait. So they tell them that they can't talk to you. So even when they go home and ain't at church, they won't call you. Right. Yeah, because you have to remember, but you have to, because you have to remember, people who are in these type of spaces literally believe the doctrine. They're not faking church. That's why I, people say everybody ain't faking church. Everybody don't go to church, say hallelujah, and then go home and be something else. There are people who literally go home and they're the same person. So a lot of people that I like, my dad was that way, but I was really strict. We didn't do, we didn't, but I didn't cuss, didn't we didn't listen to worldly music. We couldn't even watch everything we wanted on TV. Thankfully, my parents were divorced and my mother wasn't really religious, so that helped. But um. My father, being as religious as he was, and me having friends whose parents were very similar, they believed that shit. So they they were afraid of the prophet. So the prophet says not to talk to me. The same prophet who has told you stories or you've witnessed things throughout your life of people's lives being fucked up, and they somehow attribute it to, the, to them not listening to the man of God. And I'm dead serious. These are stories you will hear literally every single day, all day. It's just the so-and-so. Remember, she uh, her husband got killed. Well, she was, man of God told her not to go to that thing. And she didn't, she went anyway, and her husband died. So you hear these kind of stories constantly. These people, so you, these people take make a man into a deity. Right. Well, he made himself into a deity. And these niggas believed it. Well, they believe. You know? Yeah, they believe. it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's so. So they basically indoctrinate you by constantly repeating the same shit to you over and over again. He healed the man of the quote unquote man of God will tell you all these stories about how he told sister so and so not to marry this man. And she married him anyway. And she ended up having to shoot him. Like the dead serious is the kind of stories they would tell you. What, what, what he ain't telling is the reason why he told her not to marry him because he wanted her. I don't even know if it was that. I honestly don't. Because the thing about these kind of places is sometimes you have the scandalous stories and sometimes you don't. Like, not all of them are like that, which makes it even harder for people to leave because you don't have those crazy scandalous stories. So because that wasn't those kind of stories going around, not saying it didn't happen, but because those weren't those stories, 
people were fully indoctrinated. And if those two had been happening, I feel like people would have told me of anything goodbye. Cause I was one of the first people out of my age group. I was one of the first people to leave and never come back. Everybody else either left and came back or they never left. You know, what's interesting is just jumping in the tail end of, of what you were saying. Um, the whole thing about the group dynamic um, and cults, it's almost I can see why people fall into it, because it's almost indistinguishable from what goes on in, in other social settings. Like even, exactly. for example, I was thinking when you were saying, you know, about the shunning and all of that kind of thing, it reminded me of like the uh, the stereotypical high school experience where you're the end, you're with the in crowd and then something happens. You don't want to hang out with these people anymore, or this person anymore. So they shun you. You know what I'm saying? And then there's the leader of the group and they tell the other people, I oh, don't talk to him or don't talk to her. You know, we don't click no more and all this type of stuff. It really mimics um, a lot of behavior that we see in other social contexts. So I'm wondering if that has a role in why um, so many people are easily um, indoctrinated into these. I'm, basically, what I'm saying is I wonder if it's just something in our human experience that allows us to be susceptible to these kinds of things you know oh absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely that's exactly what it is so the thing about human beings if whether people want to admit it or not every we need we need each other we are literally interdependent beings right. absolutely that's why um, everybody's going crazy right now yeah exactly mm-hmm. and right exactly people are willing to risk their lives to get connected right yeah yeah so um you know we're 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 interconnected we think in a certain way and it's literally the way our brains are made up it's not even things that we can fully control all the time um it's like they always show you these studies about like you know they have people in a room and uh let's say it's like a waiting room or a lobby or something and somebody's you know sitting in there a bell rings that person stands up you walk in every time the bell rings that person stands up for like two seconds and sits back down uh, somebody else walks in and does the same thing. Next thing you know, you're doing it. You don't even know why you're doing it. Then they, the, in, the, in the video, they had rooms of people doing it. By the end, by the end, of, the, end of the day, rooms of people are doing it, sitting up and they don't know why, but that's apparently what you do in the space. Our brains are literally designed to do that so we can be safe within groups. Um, the feeling of rejection is extremely painful for human beings, whether it's a, a, a divorce, a death, um, whatever it is, separation, rejection, that feels horrible to us. We don't want to be separated from the group or from people that we care about. So if you, so almost every group is like that. Any group you're in, that's why I'm also, I'm probably the way I am about groups now. I don't tend to be very dedicated to them because of that. Right. Mm, um, right. And, and having had the experience I have, I know how to spot group think right away. Not everybody has the ability to know that they're in, in, in group think. You know what I mean? Like, for example, with the, let's say the four of us in, Char- in Char- Champagne Sharks, right? If we have different opinions, we have no qualms with challenging each other's opinions or including our own perspective. Some groups, you can't do that. No matter how small the group is, the second you say something that, that sounds dissenting, everybody in the group attacks you or goes in on whatever point that you made. And you start to say, oh, shit, well, let me never bring that up again. Right, right, And then right. you start to fall in line. So anybody is susceptible to it. It's not just religious people. It's not people who are, because um, you could be super smart. People who are have doctorate degrees join cults, right? Oh, it has yeah. nothing to do with intelligence. Um, and from what they say, from what a lot of people say who work in that field, they say really anybody is susceptible to join a cult. But you'd have to, you wouldn't know it until it was too late most of the time. So you don't, so you don't even realize that even your job group can be a cult and you don't realize it. There are definitely cultist jobs. And I'm sure you guys have seen them. <laughs> right. it, it, Amway and all that type of shit. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Herbalife. Herbalife is a cult Herbalife, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Nike is a cult. Mm-hmm. Look. Any of those pyramid schemes, all of that stuff. Yeah. So that's the thing. So anybody's susceptible to joining a cult in particular. However, the thing about religion, um, if religion, cult or no cult, it has a huge impact on the way people think and interact with each other and how they seek relationships. So whether or not you're in a cult, there are churches that still tell women, no, you have to stay dedicated to your man if he cheats on you. Speaking of which, um, and, I, and I know Vita, you know, this ain't nothing personal towards you. Greek for, fraternities and sororities. Oh, yeah. You know Definitely. what I'm saying? Real cultish. Real cultish. It's, you know, it even scares me sometimes when I look at it's, it's again, it's different being in California because there's no HBCUs here. But I've definitely talked to people from other parts and they, it is so weird how cultish it is. Like they're like you literally can't say or do something. Yeah, if you're things. an alpha, you have to marry another chick that's an AKA. If you're a delta, you have to marry an omega. Like it's real weird. But again, like you said, out here on the West Coast, 
it wasn't no, even it ain't like Kansas. That. Or, yeah, so it's so different. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's so like different. But down I, south like I, it is. I think I was telling, I forgot who I was telling. Was it T? I forgot who it was. Or was it you guys? I don't know. But I was saying like, it's so different being in LA because I don't have, like it's such a small part of anything. Like nobody really is super strict about things. Um, you, you know, within any organization, there's probably all types of rules and stuff. So I'm not saying, you know, that's a bad thing. But, you know, a lot of those orgs sometimes, they, they act like if you're at a party and you mess up their little stroll, they act like it's the end of the fucking world. If you yeah. don't know and you don't know anything about Greek life, which I didn't the first time I actually broke up a stroll, <laughs> you know, they got all mad at me. And I said, I was so confused. I was like, what are you mad about? Y'all pushed me. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what they do. They start their little stroll and everybody's supposed to get out the way. I didn't get out the way. They pushed me. I pushed back and everybody was mad. And I was like, I didn't know what the fuck this was. Nobody said shit to me. I don't fucking know. Vita was in the middle of a real life stomp the yard. Uh, that's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> Columbus, uh, what's this dude name? Columbus, Columbus uh, Short. Short. Columbus yeah. Short. Yeah. He just come out of nowhere because he, he had a very similar experience in that movie, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Uh, he broke up them in the middle of them getting ready to do their thing, and then it turned into a big thing. But you know, um, taking it back to the to the religious aspect of the cults, um, you know, even though there's a lot of similarities in in, in cult like behavior amongst different you know different contexts, the religious one is is really I don't, I don't, I don't even want to say more dangerous because cults. You know, the danger in a cult varies, right? You don't have to have a religious aspect to it to be or a spiritual aspect in order for a cult to be dangerous. But I would say that it's something a little extra because you you they make you feel your immortal soul is is at risk yes. of you know eternal That's why it's damnation, so right? Yeah. So it's not even just the the physical aspect of it, you know, the mental, the emotional abuse, but then you throw in, you know, whatever spirituality that that comes into play and that even that, that adds on to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, absolutely. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is, um, these aspects roll over so well, even into more, um, traditional, you know, mainline denominations, you can see certain cult like characteristics. I remember years ago, I had a friend and, and, you know, they would always invite me to their church or whatever. And, um, this poor girl, I mean, she had been through a whole lot, you know, sexually assaulted when she was younger. Uh, you know, some people deal with sexual assault differently, Vita. You know, they, some people, they never want to be touched ever again. And then some people, they become extremely promiscuous. You just really can never really tell which way it's going to go for some people. You right. Know? And then she, but her, in her case, she had issues um, I guess being promiscuous and whatnot. So it was something, you know, she would be praying up in the closet, praying just all kinds of craziness. And um, I remember... I would try to talk to her and then, you know, my wife would try to talk to her and say, well, you know, you don't have to do this or do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, it's not, um, you know, you don't have to do X, Y, and Z. You know, you can take another approach. You can get therapy. You can do this. And I remember one day she had her and one of her elders call me on the phone, <laughs> call me on the, on a three-way call and, you know, try to talk to me about certain things. And I wouldn't back down off of what I said. And so they, she just stopped talking to me altogether. And this is in the main line, you know, this is a, a, a Kojic church. You know what I'm saying? The Church of God in Christ. And, and yeah. um, similar behavior. And I said, wow, they really got this girl, like, in a cult-like setting. And long story short, she ended up having some type of nervous breakdown. And, you know, I seen her maybe a couple of years ago. This is almost 20 years later. And um, she, you know, she's got some serious, serious emotional and mental problems going on now where, you know, basically she's, she's all but lost her mind. You know, and I can't help but think that that experience at that location, that contributed to, um, you know, what ended up happening with that girl. Uh, absolutely. I have no doubt about that. My chances are she already had the issues before she got there. They get there and, exas and exacerbate it. Um, under the guise of helping her, um, pray it away other, and all that kind of stuff. Right, yeah. uh -huh. and and you're absolutely right. Like they, it is. It's a it's a lot different when it's a religious portion because of what you said. There's this your whole immortal soul is at risk here, um, and the risk of the lives of your children are at risk. Like you have religious cults that literally believe in beating children by the age of four. Oh man, I mean, uh, four no, not four years, four months. Whoa, oh man. 
because you have to drive the devil out of them that early. Mm-hmm. So it's it's the it's the part the part about religion is that it takes you out of the reality, right? So you believe this to be true. You you honestly believe now just in taking it out of um what we know now on the outside looking in, right? You sincerely believe that something horrible would happen to your child if you didn't do something in particular. You do that thing because you say, "I don't want this horrible thing to happen to my child." So if you sincerely believe that you have to beat your child to help them and save their soul so they don't suffer in hell for the, for eternity, you're going to do that. So that's what that's what, and it's sad because we don't we don't even realize how deep in the and how deep in your brain that is, like how deep into your psyche that is, because it's so normal for you now. It does it almost makes doesn't make sense for you not to do it, right? It's like I, I it's something I don't want to be evil. And, and sinful and hated by God if I don't do these things, you know, horrific or not, right? Um, they, they often tell you that story about Abraham um, about to sacrifice his son. Right, right, right. They, yeah. they, they, they have specific ways that they do this, right? So it's not like they just tell you straight out to do something crazy. They have scriptures to back it up. And if you live in a society that has told you the Bible is the end all be all, and this is how, this is the, the word of God, you know, regardless of what evidence there is to prove it, that's what they told you and that's what you believe. And now you have, now you're part of this religious group that says, yeah, that is the word of God. And here's what the word of God says. The word of God says, and then it's something like, you know, you, you, it's okay to beat somebody in, in, as long as you don't kill them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. you can have a slave, just don't beat them until you kill but this, them. But, but see, and this, and this is the thing about that. Um, and I'm not going to say all people are like, but a lot of people that are looking for that. And a lot of people that go to these type of churches, they don't read the damn Bible anyway. You know what I'm saying? So they're looking oh, for no. leadership. They're looking for someone to tell them what to do with their life. Not just their life, with their soul. Yes, they're looking for yes. somebody to tell them what to do with their soul. Now, if you ask the average motherfucker, hey man, where's your soul at? They can't tell you. <laughs> right. You're talking about the soul of their feet. Okay. Right. So that's how that's how that's how um I'm I'm and I'm trying to I'm trivializing it. Because really, if you think about it, that's really what it is a lot of trivial shit. Because they there's a way for them to make anything based on the Bible, what they say it is. You can find anything in the Bible that'll justify anything you want. You can find it, You can find a way to justify rape. You can justify murder. You can justify eating pork. You can justify eating bottom feeder fish. You can justify anything. But again, when I'm talking about black people specifically, is like I said, uh, like the clip of John Henry Clark, and, and we'll put it in the show notes, uh, Dr. John Henry Clark, it's the clip of, it's called, uh, You Have No Friends. And one thing Dr. John Henry Clark says, he says, black people in particular are ticklish on this because we're confused about all religions. You know what I'm saying? And we're talking about a master scholar teacher based on he, him, check into Diop, people like that. They study these things and they and he tells you how black people on the continent consistently got tricked into believing these different religions, whether it was Islam, whether it was Christianity, all these things. And he says these are this is information you already had. You let somebody come back with something you already had, rewash it, sell it to you. And now you believe in that instead of believing in what you already had. Everything in the Bible, everything in the the the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, you already had it. It's funny because a lot of those things, um, there's a couple of things. Some of those things in the Bible are written because, like, for example, the concept of faith. Faith is Having faith isn't a bad thing. Having faith in yourself, believing in something despite the evidence, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's an internal thing. You don't necessarily need a book to tell you that. That's something you already had. And it's you already in you. It's, it's, it's Your ability in to you. believe in something yeah. without the evidence is already in you. Absolutely. But, um, but you have this religious doctrine that tells you this. Oh, that's true. Therefore, everything else must also be true. Um, another thing to your point, you were saying people don't even read the Bible anyway. The thing is, the people there are people who actually do, but because they've been indoctrinated by the people that have taught it to them, they're going to just read what reinforce read it re- in the same re- re- way reinforces and it reinforces the religion. exactly exactly. So, like yes. my dad was, my dad knew the Bible backwards and forward. I knew the back Bibles backward and forward. I used to be a youth preacher, right? So. Uh, it was just funny because I don't remember shit now, but <laughs> the time I was all about the shit, you know, um, and I studied it. My dad studied it. I mean, but I would stay up all night. He would have us do those. I, we were the weird Kojic type Christians. We were Pentecostal. So oh, okay. we yeah. were the we so yes yeah, so we did the really you know we were my dad would do this. It was so humiliating now thinking about it as an adult. But he would have the window open and we he'd make us pray loudly. So if the neighbors were playing music. 
um, that he thought was ungodly, which was all of it because we lived in South Central. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, so they were playing their music, and my dad would open the window and start saying these loud prayers and speaking in tongues and making us say loud prayers and speak in tongues and cast out the demons, cast out the devil, the devil in the music. And I'm serious. This is like loudly we would have to do this, you know. Um, the other thing, and we would have to fast. I tell you, I think I told you guys this. We would fast, and it wasn't like Islam. Islam, you could eat. We couldn't eat. You can eat when the sun go down. When you do, uh, was it like Ramadan? Yeah. You can, you can eat when the sun go down. You can't eat shit. We couldn't. I I did not eat literally a do, a drop of any food for three weeks. Oh three man! Three weeks. Wow. Wow. That's what I'm telling you. So when people fasting is not, it's that's why I know people say that. Oh, you're gonna die after if you don't eat for a week. That's not true. You won't die if you don't eat for a week. You'll be fine. Um, <laughs> but. It's not good for you. I'm not saying to do that. Right, right. Of <laughs> but, course, um, of course. Yeah, my, my dad would do 40 days. My brother would do 14 days. He was younger than me. I would have to do uh, uh, 21 days, the three weeks. And my dad would do 40 days. Just nothing but water? Just water. Sometimes juice if I had like rehearsals or practices and things to keep my energy up. But even then, the juice had to be 100% juice. No added nothing. Not from concentrate. Um, had to be 100% juice. Um... Yeah, no food, nothing, no lettuce. <laughs> have, wow, not, not, you couldn't eat a grape. We couldn't do shit. So, um, and I was so indoctrinated. I couldn't even do that now, which is funny. But back then, I was so indoctrinated. It, I could do it, and I could never see myself doing that. I had to fast on my birthday one year. It was my sixteenth birthday, actually. I had to fast on my sixteenth birthday, which was supposed to be like sweet sixteen year. I couldn't eat, <laughs> you know. Um. But that's how indoctrinated, like, it was telling you, this just crazy. And it's, the thing is, if you went, it looked like a regular church. And they even take it out of just the cultish type churches. If we just look at how religion has affected black people and our outlook on a lot of shit, even ourselves, and like, we don't even consider that, right? So even if you're not going to a crazy church with a, a bunch of, you know, people, holy rollers saying a bunch of nonsense, a lot of these churches are also still pushing a lot of stupid shit that's not real. So, for example, constantly giving them all your fucking money. Well, yeah, <laughs> I've seen churches with ATMs. <laughs> and I told I told somebody that went to the church. It was a, it's a church here in Portland. I seen one in the South too. Uh, they were given, you know, they had an ATM in the church. I was like, that right there lets you know you should be robbing your pastor at gunpoint. <laughs> you know, it's and they looked funny. at me no, like I was shit. crazy. They looked at me like I was crazy. I said, "This motherfucker's robbing you." Right? You don't get it? Right? He roll up in a Cadillac or a Lincoln Town car, yeah. or and y'all struggling to just pay your bills. Yeah, yeah. I know. I knew a no, pastor. literally. Yeah, no, literally. seriously, literally. I knew a pastor that has two churches here in Portland, and each. You know, you mind you, there ain't very many black people here. See, so he pretty much has sixty percent of the black population going to his churches. Okay, mm. so when you and I did the math in my own brain, right? Because I'm just one of those stupid people. I just like to do math. So I was like, okay, you got about. About mm, two hundred people coming to your church religiously. Your other church, you got about two hundred. I know when you pass the plate around, you ain't telling people how much to put in, but I know they gonna put put in at least twenty. Yeah, nigga, you bankrolling. I need to rob y'all. Don't ass. forget the tithes. So tithes is ten yeah. percent of whatever you Some make. of them yeah. churches they'll pass that collection plate around multiple two, times. three times <laughs> in the service. I, I, need, just I like, need to wear. Yeah, I, I need times? to have a hoodie on with the mat. Well, I need a ski mask on. Because you come in here without one and robbing people. So I might as well just put one on. I'm you know surprised it hasn't happened. It real. real talk. I'm surprised it hasn't happened uh, more often. Um, it, but it, yeah, me too. I'm a, you know what's, what's, what's <laughs> funny in, in, in a sort of iron, ironic way is a lot of the newer cults that are starting to gain prominence. You know, like, um, for example, um, the hell is it? The um, Eidos. No, 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 no. That's a religion. Religion, yeah, that too. Yeah, 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 you ain't lying. It's damn near a religion. Oh, uh, you ain't lying, man. Uh, no, I'm talking about uh, Hebrew Israelites, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. what's funny is, ironically, a lot of these newer movements are challenging the whole tithing thing. So it's forced a lot of those old school pastors that, you know, tell people you need to put the collection plate, don't rob the man of God and all this stuff. It's kind of... The fact that them Hebrew Israelites be out there banging so hard on what they call pork chop preachers, that's making yeah. them have to uh, fall back on that a lot more. It's kind of it's kind of funny in a, in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like one of the things about the Hebrew Israelites is um, that religion is not new. 
it's mainly on the East Coast. That that's been on the East Coast yeah, for a long it got time. Big over here randomly. Though. Yeah, like, yeah. They started remember, traveling. They was heavy here in like the late '90s that I remember. Yeah, like the late '90s, early 2000s, and then they just kind of disappeared after a while. Like it was, it was starting to get. You find a lot of them in. Here. You find a lot of them in Denver, Colorado. Okay, so they bounced up out of L.A. and then just went over to um, because they started moving in on a lot of because, you know, the Nation of Islam is, is big in the L.A. area. Oh, yeah. Or at one oh, time yeah. it was, especially in the I, 90s. I was about to say, I remember when the NOI was huge because oh, yeah. you, you could you, almost every corner in the hood you get a pie. final call in a bean exactly. pie. <laughs> yeah, not no more. Like, it's, it's not like that anymore. And I remember the Hebrew Israelites, they picked up a lot of those dudes like they they ran them up off the block and they were out there doing their thing. And uh, now you don't see any of it anymore. I don't see. Well, you any. know, you know, with with uh, gentrification comes a that's new religion. True. So that's true. No, in the hood. Well, in the hood now, they got Hebrew Israelites like everywhere. They be on Crenshaw. They be on Slauson. And oh, so they Western. still be out. Okay. Yeah, okay. they be on Slauson. But the thing that's so funny, they look ridiculous. So they yeah, have they just like pa- Conan the Barbarian. Right. <laughs> yeah, they have all these party. Like they look like fucking party city costumes. Right. And they just sit on the corner with the amp yelling at everybody. Uh-huh. The thing is, L.A. is in a walking culture like New York. Right. So most people are just driving by and know what the fuck you're talking about. Mm. You know, and if you look at most of them, they all look dusty because they probably only recruit on the bus. Yeah, they, they, there was, they, there was a lot dusty. of a lot of them dudes was trying to claim he, uh, Kendrick was a Hebrew Israelite because his uh his cousin oh, is okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he he says I think he's, he had his cousin on the album and he says some his Hebrew, Hebrew Israelitish type things. But the thing about people have to understand about artists is they include a lot of shit. Like <laughs> especially artists like Kendrick, you don't even like that doesn't mean he believes in a particular religious ideology. It might just be something he looked at, you know, or, or thought a particular concept. And it sounds concept. good over a beat. Yeah, or a particular concept was interesting. Who knows? I, I don't really know his religious belief. And also like um, Mario was saying, like. You know, these people have, uh, you know, they have these, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, what did you just say Mario said a second ago? Now I lost my thought. What about um, how they kind of correct some of the stuff that a lot of these. Uh, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly. That's why I love you, Mario. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I'll take that love. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, but yeah, exactly that, though. They take these um, other religious beliefs that people that black people believe in and point out the hypocrisies and so we'll go oh that's just, i had that same problem with this situation that was my that's why i hated the black church because this this, right. this yeah i did notice this problem in my community that's why i want to join this organization because they get me so then now you join the organization because they they understood you on those particular right. points right and before now they got you, know, you out here hollering now they got you out there exactly now you in their service, you know what I'm saying. See, and that's what it always it always comes back around to that. We got the truth over here. You need to join us in whatever foolishness we got going on, and, and leave that other foolishness that you was doing oh, over oh, here. And the world is your enemy. We, we this is the only safe space. It's us against them. And every time somebody calls out something negative that you guys that that group has done, it's because they're against you. Oh, they're trying to take us down. This is religious hatred. They're just hating on our on our new religious movement. Um, Perse- you know, persecution you know, that, complex. Yeah, exactly. It's persecution. They're targeting us. They want to take us down. That's how most religious groups um, keep their strongholds on people, even after things get exposed. Is they go, well, that person was of the devil. Now they're going to go lie on us to the media, and so you know this person escapes the cult. They tell the media. Then they say the media is lying, the cops are lying, everybody's targeting them. That's Everybody, what everybody's Texas. lying but them. Right, exactly. Yep, yep. And see, that goes back to what I was saying earlier about incorporating the spiritual aspect, because everybody does that. Let's, let's keep it 100. Everybody, every cult-like movement group, et cetera, they all do that. You know what I'm saying? When they when they, when they they spot get blown up, they blame everybody, blame, like the Trump cult. Republicans. Republicans yeah, you know, exactly, right? The Republicans have created a whole narrative, right? The media's against us, academia's against us, Hollywood is against us, everybody's against us, so we form whole other alternative branches of media in order to, to um, create an echo chamber around our beliefs and ideas. Right. But meanwhile, they're saying everybody else is brainwashed, but them. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like, bro, but just look at what you're <laughs> look at what you're doing now. You're literally in a bubble all day long, all day long. You just know Russ Limbaugh, Dennis Prager, uh, whoever else is in those conservative bubbles. I know I used to be one of them. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if you know what? that. Yeah, me. Yeah, I used to be um a little, little uh, low key black conservative. I used to listen to all that what? shit. Yeah, Mario. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> That's a whole nother story, but that ties into religion I as wasn't well. Clear on how you got out of that shit? That's well, what I that know. well, um, the whole Black Lives Matter movement. You know what I'm saying? Because I was never a coon. So that's two different uh, dynamics. You know what I I'm see. saying? Mm-hmm. I was one of them dudes that was like, the Democratic Party ain't been doing nothing for black folks all these years anyway. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm going to just try to see what these conservative ideas are like. This will work, you know. And a lot of it sounds simple, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm not even going to get into the whole thing. But, um, but back to what I was saying, it was like, that was also a part of a religious thing. I call myself becoming a born again Christian back in 1998, 99. And so along with that, I automatically felt like in my head, okay, Democrats are bad. So I have to join the Republicans now, now that I'm a Christian, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was involved with, I mm-hmm. left the black church and I got involved with like a lot of uh, mainstream evangelical churches. You know what I'm saying? White churches mm. and shit. You was like listening that. to like John Hagee and shit and Kenneth Copeland? Right. Nah, 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 not there. But John Hagee, yeah. <laughs> John Hagee, yeah. Never Kenneth Copeland. I used to have to watch John Hagee every morning on TBN. Exactly. But it was that. It was, um, I was more into the more of the like the more intellectual stuff like R.C. Sproul and stuff like that. Um, because oh, okay. he was into heavy into philosophy. I'm heavy into philosophy and stuff like that. So that was kind of like my world. That's a whole nother conversation. Like when I almost <laughs> lost my whole little faith and all that, because I would sit up in black churches, man, and it, I would just feel like an idiot sitting up in there. Right. It was never anything in there that got my that catered to my mind or anything. You know what I'm saying? So. After a while, I was just going to give the whole thing up. You know what I mean? But that, I don't even want to get into all that. We'll talk about that another day. But um, I, see, now you didn't make me go into a tangent and lose, <laughs> <laughs> and lose where I was going with it. Um, well, I know we said that, you know, Rep- I was saying how Republicans are also. There cult. you go. It, right. They have their own little cult of personality. With the, and it took it to another level with when Trump came into office, right? That's a whole mm-hmm. cult. And they almost did a coup d'etat <laughs> based on their cult like beliefs. It. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't even got to have. I always say this you don't need a spiritual aspect for something to be, to pursue something with religious zeal. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could form a religion out of anything. You don't even have to believe in God or any of that. It could become a religion. That's real. You know what I'm saying? That's real. And, and, a, and, and a way that a lot of people get tricked into these things is they they only think of one way that you can be involved in a cult, and that's if there's the spirituality to it, when it doesn't really necessarily even have to be that. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of people that that left religion, right, became atheists, and then they spent all day in the atheist cults. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's oh that was because God. they Listen. they were so um, diametrically opposed because there's an anger when you leave that and you don't, and you don't think it's true yep. anymore and all that. So what you do is you take all the energy and devotion that you put into that thing, then you put it into this other thing over here that's in opposition to what you once believed. And so even yep. that becomes... You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just, (laughs) it's so hard to get out of that mentality. All right, y'all. So that is the end of part one. Go to, again, patreon.com forward slash champagne sharks or click the link in the show notes to get part two. Be good.